All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Egmi, and Hooked on You just came out just today, actually. So we are going to start. Before we get started, what shall we call it? Just Egmi works just fine. All right. Cough, cough, cough. You wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging the inside of your throat, as if you'd nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open it to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from, or a single fact about your life. What you do know is that, despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Cough, cough. Wow. Really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute, or can I go on? Because I can give you a minute. You've got plenty of time. Endless time, really. An eternity, if you catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, Edme. May I continue? Please, go on. Okay, then. As I was... <coughs> cough. As I was saying, you looked down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. Ugh. Uh, that's actually grotesque. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit. A stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other... Ick. Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind... It's completely blank. What will you do? Uh, take up the face? No, thank you. I'm gonna run. You turn away from this wretched sight and begin to run, but the beach, it's endless. Despite how far you run, you get nowhere. Exhausted, you stop and look behind you. Your footsteps are raised by soft blue waves. You turn inland, considering your lack of options. You've got no choice but to walk into the brush. However, the beauty of the beach is not shared by the darkness of the palmy woods before you. There's nothing inviting about that shadowy forest. Terror freezes you in your steps. Why are you trying to run away? This is paradise. You're here to enjoy yourself, don't you know? Have a little bit of fun. Take charge of your own experience. Well, that sure was weird, that voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right, but you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. <laughs> it's a bloody volleyball. Look at that. Not like a handprint. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand there next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Little help, please? You turn around, and you see what's waiting for you. Your jaw just about hits the ground. <laughs> look at Anna. My goodness. Of course, our Ray. The lovely spirit. And Trap Daddy. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and the well tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity. Fear. Desire. You can't help but stare at these casually dressed... Let's call them killers. I don't know. Not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out here. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. Hello? There are weird days. And then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at this monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. What do you do? Uh, let's toss it back. You bend down and grab the ball. It's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right in Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger. Huntress's muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand. They look her up and down and consider what it'd be like to be held tightly in those strong arms. Warm, perhaps. Maybe a little sweaty, but that's okay. It's natural. Try hard much? Blech. They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Alone again, 
You look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion on their private beach. Should you be frightened? Worried? Excited? Did I refer to them as killers? Not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they're looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much has lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, Edmi. You were made for this. Well, jeez, the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared. I'm sure it's going to work out. No good reason not to. You decide to head over and see what happens next. Let's turn down the music just a little more. There you go. It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. He derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best to just go with what Chopper says when he says it. It's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, it seems a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they're here to do more than distract from my total domination? <sighs> that was right. That sign means he was done with the game, too. Either that, I saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why the slack-jawed moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill him or not? You know you can't. At least, not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Head me. He might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. But be warned. Answer quickly and answer well. This is a timed quiz. and will be very important to later. Very important. Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? Um, average. Pretty average, I think. Just another face in the crowd. Another normal, meaningless life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself, like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, I think flight, for sure. Technically, I suppose I can fly. Honestly, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. As far as I go, I'm still not where I want to be. It's your best subject in school. Not math, so I guess you go history. Nice. It's important to know what came before so that we are not doomed to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways, but still. What's your favorite animal? Dogs, I'm a dog person. They look absolutely adorable in a little puppy mask. What's your favorite color? Three-day-old corpse. Nobody would expect me to pick this, so I'm going to say three-day-old corpse. It's a pretty edgy answer, right? I'm pretty dangerous. I talk about corpses. No biggie. Those are no good to me unless they've been frozen. You'd be surprised how quickly good meat can spoil. Maybe you wouldn't be surprised? I'm still getting to know you. What's your dream job? Not working at all. If we get to do what we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Only she could spin laziness into some kind of grand crusade. These damn millennials. Best flavor of ice cream? Horse flesh? Not chocolate, we're going vanilla. Vanilla? My favorite flavor is pain. Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla. Swirled with pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream, am I right? Hold on a second. This reminds me. I am right. Always. It's a lesson you should learn before we go too much further. Do what I say if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now, narrator? You rascal. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island, even for faceless voices. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? I guess we go mint chip. The best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you want to know what if you want to know what a loser is, say hello to Wraith. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like everybody else. I like nice people and loathe big dumb idiots. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. 
But the things I do hate, I really hate, you know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subservient to those in power. It's better to choose just not to take part. Jeez, it's like she's downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh no, oh wait. I'm remembering Spirit's story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. So lots of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it. Only sometimes. You really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Rafe. Let's move on. Otherwise, they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. We're done playing. Let's do something else instead. Wow, for once I actually agree with the meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's a massive boat dock nearby. I'll give everybody a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth. The way it's flaunted needlessly and the cruelty it engenders. What about hanging out by the pool? Find the water calming. Simple. Beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all seriously? It's a perfectly good lounge trip to chill, to chill out at right here. I'm tired. And besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? Well, let's chill. My spirit. How about the- Oh, that's the yacht? <laughs> well, I guess I'm going here. Perfect. You obviously have a modicum of taste and good judgment. At least I hope we do. Guess we'll find out. Worst case, we'll find out how strong your bones are, how heavy you are to pick up and throw, and how fast your lifeless body sinks. Should be a pretty chill day, regardless. Hold on! Oh my god, Claudette! And Dwight! For just one moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activity coordinators. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. Look how cute they are! They're the only help remaining on the island. This place we call Murderer's Island. Cute, dramatic, musical flourish. There it is. None of the others survived. <clears throat> survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall here, heretofore refer to them as survivors with a capital S. These who have worked here for a long time. So very long. I actually don't know how long it's been. Sorry. Anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with the nervous energy that's starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present you with your options whenever possible, whenever possible and don't just run off to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most important you could, the most you could do to help us get off this I- Dwight! Yes, pardon me. Please, follow us. Hey, narrator? Yes? Something I can help you with? Those two. Claudette and Dwight. Did they just start mention- Did they just start to mention something about wanting to escape? Escape an option. Should I be trying to escape- Escape? Them? Oh, no, 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 no. I think you're mistaken. Seems like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right. That. Yes, it's true. He was. He just meant that he wants to get to the other vacation island getaway. A couple miles south of here. There's much fancier accommodations than this island. Some of those big corporate outfits. Quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. This doesn't quite have the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. No, no, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter. Mostly. When I agree with them. Not like that other island. So, what'll it be? Um, lounging. With spirit, please? Finally, freedom from the preposterous premise that the four of us would be engaged in some sort of thrilling two-on-two -two volleyball match. Spirit looks at you from beneath her gigantic sun hat. 
She takes a conspira conspiratorial tone. I don't know whose idea of volleyball was in the first place, but I hate them. I tried to feign a sprained ankle, but everyone already knows that I technically float above the ground, so nobody believed I was even putting any pressure on my joints in the first place. Then I tried to annoy everyone by not giving a crap, and when that didn't work, I tried whining, and when that didn't work, I threatened to kill every single person on this island. But, turns out I'm not the first to toss those kinds of threats around on this island. So, thanks I guess, for getting it called off. Are we threatening to end each other again? <laughs> no, it's Dwight who takes a conspiratorial tone, his eyes shifting as he slips into a loud whisper. Please, just make it quick. Is what you'll be saying when we get behind the bar to make you the drink of your dreams. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> hilarious, right? Right, Dwight? Yeah, right, right. So, what will you be having? Vodka, soda, sangria, scotch rocks, or virgin dequery. Let's just go good old vodka soda. Coming right up. Really takes me back home. You know, vodka is very special to me. Warms the blood on a cold night in the woods. On occasional, I would, how do you say, bump into the occasional soldier while hiking across the motherland. He always had a nip of vodka tucked away in a special little silver package in a special little hidden pocket. But no one hides from me. But basic to be drinking vodka on a trip called I blend now. You're mixing it with soda? Really? Being passionate about being passionless is so last year. It's also my thing and you're making it look bad. That's two strikes. Since we've fulfilled your requests, it's time for you to return the favor. I should have known there was a catch. Icebreaker time. I swear, had I known they'd pull this kind of faux enthusiastic community building crap, I would have suggested we attempted to walk to the lowest point of the ocean before I even set foot near this bar. You don't think it'd be kind of fun? A little fun? Never mind, I hate it. This sucks. But it could be fine. Whatever you say. Has anyone seen my hat? I've literally never seen him in a hat. We want to make small talk, I'm at least picking a topic before we end up forced to do some lame improv game that nerds need to learn their non-sports after school activities that I definitely never did because I'm no nerd. Who thinks a certain someone doth protest too much? Sitting here on this beautiful sunny afternoon, warm sand beneath the cool fog beneath my severed feet. The topic I choose is books, novels, comics, fiction or non. Reading is the only real escape from this inescapable horror of life. The escape into your own mind. Grown rolls to the crowd. Not a lot of readers here, I imagine, based on that response. They are much more enthusiastic about drinking. Considering the situation we're in, it seems an appropriate time to ask you. Ed me, what's your desert island book? The one you'd bring with you if you were, well, on an island like this. Oh, and it has to be classic horror. For reasons that should be obvious. She means because this island is horror villains. And also those books are all in the public domain. Nothing too modern. Humanity has really gotten soft these past hundreds of years. So what's your favorite? Um, Books? No thanks. I kind of like books. Uh, Frankenstein? I didn't actually read it, but I've seen like three movie versions of Frankenstein. They've all been pretty good. You know, you can lie to make yourself look smarter. They're killers, not mind readings. Oh, that's a good one. Seeking knowledge but finding only death? Yeah, been there. I can't say that my experiments have been as successful, but, well, fingers crossed. A fire? Don't even get me started. Experiments? Crap. Not again. I swear. Every excuse you give him is this talk about- God, <laughs> shut up. Did you just tell me to shut up? <coughs> Sorry. Take it from me. This one likes to think he's the scientist, but he's actually the monster. Can, can I be a little bit of both? Like I said, I haven't actually read it, but that sounds smart enough that I'd be willing to believe it's the true meaning of the story. Now about these old stories that belong to someone else, I think it's time to make up some new stories of our own. Before you know what's going on, Huntress is waving an empty vodka bottle in the air, a devilish twinkle in her half-mask-covered eye. Might I suggest something a little naughty? Let's all get in a circle and spin this bad boy. Great idea! God damn, guest appearance by Trickster? Trickster? Isn't it a bit late to introduce a new character? I thought I was the only one who gets to make the rules, so... I'm not sure who I'm asking. But I wasn't ready for this. Well, hello. And who is this new fan in the waiting? Beat it, hack. 
I don't know. What's the harm of inviting one more person to join our circle for our game? Oh, I can't stay. I was just saying it's a great idea. Also teasing the secret trickster ending. I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. To the loop. The rules are simple. First you spin, then you swap. Spit, that is. But let's be clear. This ain't a peep show. We're here to have a good time, but in a classy way. All makeups will happen out of view of the public eye. Real romantic life. Yes, romance is the goal. So we'll all be waiting here in complete silence to try to listen in and use our imaginations while you make out on the other side of the bar. You're not watching. Like adults. Romantic, well-adjusted adults. Edmy, you're up. You grip the bottle in your hand. Put your fate in the hands of the empty bottle gods. Mini games consist of two parts. On top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction, and on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. This here upcoming minigame is a special minigame, perfect for the less coordinated because there's no winning or losing. Well, not technically. Where the pointer stops, that's your result. Suppose if it doesn't stop where you want it to, that's a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. Okay, ready to play? Or would you like to repeat that? Uh, I think I'm ready. Away we go. Spin the bottle and see who you're gonna smooch. Oh, Wraith. You got Wraith. You two are meant to be. Psych. You actually have to spin multiple times to get your final result. First to get to three times is your true match. That's how we play hardcore spin the bottle here on this island. Now get your spin on. Oh, you got Trapper. What if I don't get three in a row? <laughs> and Huntress. You got Huntress. Trapper again, and Wraith, excuse me. Trapper. I'm getting everybody but Spirit. And Trapper, that's three. Trapper is your true match. Ooh. Just this morning, you were waking up on a strange beach, surrounded by strangers with murderous intent. Now you're looking across the beach towel trapper, lust in his eyes, sweat glistening on his skin. Your heart races. You can feel your pulse pounding in your ears. Trapper takes you by the hand and you sit face to face to the private section of the bar. He begins to reach for you, putting his hands on your shoulders. You're sweating, but not in the sexy way he is. You're sweating in the gross way you'd sweat at an interview for a job you're not even remotely qualified for. You don't know what to do. If you try to unlock lips in this state, you might gross him out so completely that he'll never be able to look at you romantically again. Trapper, I, you, we, save it. It's not happening. Don't cry. I know. To get this close to a living god and then feel the sting of his rejection, it must hurt bad. But don't take it personally. Well, do. But use it to make yourself stronger. It's not because I don't want to. It's because you haven't earned it yet. You might. Later. For now, it can't be that easy. Sure, maybe with one of the others. They're weak. Sad, lonely, not me. I don't need this. It's mine to give or to withhold. You really dodged a bullet. This means you'll have a chance to present yourself in a bit more flattering of a light later. Assuming you survive. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I think you're cute. I'd make out with you so hard your heart would cave in if I wanted to. And I do, but I still won't. Tell anyone I told you this and you'd die. If they die, and then I have you all revived and kill you again. If anyone asks, I was the best you ever had. Which I might just be. Another time. I hate to break up such a passionate moment. That we only assume was passionate because we'd never spy on you constantly while you stay on this island. But dinner is being served right away and we must insist that you join us. We wouldn't want anyone dying of starvation. When there are so many more interesting things to die from. Seems like the next activity is mealtime? How quaint. You're expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fancy fantasy epic like you'd find on a cable. Dwight and Claudette usher you to your seat, but there's very limited seating directly around you. And Oh great. Terrific. Sees that everyone wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain other people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. 
Oh yeah, Trickster is here. Surprised? Yeah, well, they don't call him Expectedster. Sorry, even I get nervous around crowds of killers. And my whole shtick gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good at me. Real good. And we literally can't let hunches and trappers sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit at a table if they sit side by side. Look at this, we can't even fit everyone on screen at the same time. Probably think it's an error, but it's not. It was completely intentional. Let that be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them will sit opposite to you. Huntress and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? It's meat. Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite. Meat is good. Meat is murder. Which you'd know, considering what you've been up to. Who are you to get judging now? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts. You need to murder something to eat its meat, so that's like, technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Alright, enough yapping. Let's eat! Head me. You thinking what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? Several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pig wearing palm tree button down print shirts, you know? When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do literally everything on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Wow, he's right for a change. Because I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical areas. eras. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Ugh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obs. The hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Please stop. Please. I hate when we fight. Or talk. Or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have a school of Azeroth. Great. Instead of slicing it up... Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it in second death. Hand me. I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. Oh, Felix? I mean, dinner. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. It doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they'll take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value in maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up? dinner. Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated it when it got cold. Here's a machete. Freshly sharpened. The minigame. Sometimes the target is immediately visible. Sometimes it's hidden until the pointer arrives. Press the spacebar to stop the pointer while over the target to win. Fail to land on the target and you will lose. To achieve a perfect success, land on the start of the target area, not the end. Oh, is this like skill checks? Let's go. There we go. Slice. Oh, perfect. Oh, not bad. There you go. Perfect. Oh, shit. Perfect. Nice. Oh, early. I missed. You missed completely. That was pretty good. I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumpy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Shetties are dumb. Dinner is finally served. For real. The sounds, especially coming from behind the from the mask killers while they eat, which involves lifting their mask and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean, come on. We're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Kata and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. 
This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? Two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Edby. Number two is... No, number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. Might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectacle form. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my dis digestive tract connects anymore. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation of why. What do you want to tell them? <laughs> this is gross. I'm sorry, and look at that seagull. Look at that seagull! Wow, you ever seen a seagull that big? I haven't. That's incredible. Anyway, what were we talking about? Blame misdirect. Yeah, she's right at me. Pretty lame. Own who you are. Never compromise. Didn't you wash up on this island with no memory of who you are and how you got here? Yes, you did. Poor thing. You have no idea the last time you ate a real meal. And you've been standing in the sun. But the seagull... Uh-oh. He just made a lot of good points. I swear. I'm beginning to feel lightheaded. It waved at me. Maybe you need to eat to survive here. Either that, or someone poisoned you. No way. You haven't eaten, so you can't be poisoned. Hmm, whatever the answer is, you're clearly about to out, pass out. Oh hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator. The ocean. Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path. Or, at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scene's over and having to fast forward back to where you were, am I right? For this place holds many secrets. Even from itself. But the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that, and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague. Mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. You wake up to find Huntress holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. Oh good, you're okay. Sometimes when I try and care for people, they have a way of ending up less alive than when I started. Which would be a total bummer if that happened to you. It's been so long since I had a normal, happy, healthy, living person around. Usually I'm just following the same old routine of smashing everyone's heads open with a hatchet where I really get to know who they are as a person. But you, you're not nearly as scared or too busy writhing in pain to see me for me. You feel nervous in her arms. Not just because they're maybe crushing you a little bit, but because she's... Beautiful. Yes, beautiful. But I was just going to narrate that fact. Not, you know, say it out loud as a single word like some creep. Beautiful mask. Your bunny mask. It's quite gorgeous. Nice recovery. But now that you're awake and talking, you've got to keep this up. Did you make it yourself? You're the first person to ever ask me that. Yes, I did. You seem so quirky and cool. You could do anything. Own an Etsy store. Be a doctor. Why is it that you kill people? Hunch your size. You can practically see the memories flicking across her eyes, but she hasn't tried to kill you yet, so it's a good sign. That's all I was ever taught to do as a young girl, so I thought it was right. Even through the mask, you can see that Huntress is blushing a bit. Seems like your line of questioning has made her a little nervous. Hey, you didn't eat much dinner. Want a snack? She offers you some jerky. Probably human jerky, but her spice game is on point because it smells pretty damn good. Uh, I'll take it. When on Murderer's Island, you might as well as eat as the killer's suit. Plus, you really are hungry, and you can chow down on jerky essentially, right? I'd love some. After a moment of quiet chewing on what you choose to believe is not human thigh meat, you decide to be bold and ask another question. Have you ever been in a relationship before? Dang, you're really going there? You do not play around, Edme. I, um, um... I'll just takes a moment to think deeply before answering. I must say, it's quite amusing to see this hulking bombshell get all twisted up with these personal questions. 
Kudos to you, Edmund. There's this one deer that looked at me quite provocatively in the clearing once. Well, that doesn't count, does it? You hear the faintest Google bubble out from behind Huntress's mask. <laughs> You're so cute, Huntress. No, it doesn't count. Whoa, what's this? You found something in the sand. Huntress reaches down to pick it up. It's a hair clip, probably left by some little girl who was playing on the beach long ago and is definitely still alive and not dead at all. Huntress closes the bag of jerky with the hair clip. Seems like she's a little mixed up on how exactly this particular item works. Should you go with the flow, or show off some of your knowledge with advanced human aid? Uh, we'll show her how it works. You silly goose. You chuckle before reaching for the bag of jerky. You take the beret off and collect a lock of Huntress's hair, clipping it back into an attractive swoop. Much better. Huntress is so happy that you taught her something new about human trinkets. She touches the clip in her hair with a shy smile. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on the strange island. Only to find it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand which they're waving the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirts points was not part of evening's activities. That strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing is sick? No, I was... No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, 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 go! As everyone is gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone. We're not going to say who, so don't worry you. Hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means that we're behind on time for evening activities. We only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. It's just one story? Story time is my favorite activity. This is the narrative heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this step up now, I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. S sorry everyone, I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule things were. This whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. Been there before. Even though it's taking some pressure off of me, which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me. I'll snap your head off so quick and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and must are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I announce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. We still got a lot. We still got to get started on story time, so. Ed me. Who do you think you should go? Ah, oh, damn it. That's a name. Please, pick somebody quickly so this tropical, tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Miss Winyamoka? I choose you, spirit. <laughs> well, well, this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases, will ya? Really? You want to hear from me? Spirit huffs dramatically and rolls her eyes as she gets her feet in front of the campfire. Don't let her talk you out of it. She's great with ghost stories. I don't know where she gets it. She comes up with the scariest stuff. Seriously disturbing, even to me. And I literally pulled a guy's skull and spine out once with my bare hands. Talk about bullshit stories. If everyone else is gonna chit chat, I guess I can just sit down and. Huntress's eyes go behind, go red behind her mask, and both Trapper and Wraith take their seat. They know when it's worth fighting, and when it's not. <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary. It's a romance. Too late now, though. I was selected. So I'm going to tell my story. I call it The Prisoner's Kiss. You notice that Huntress and Wraith are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Nobody offered you popcorn. It was a dark summer night. Warm rain seeped from the sky like blood from an old wound. Detective Hata, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called to the scene of a strange occurrence, unlike anything she had ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. 
But how could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box. Strange, alien in its appearance, and massive in size. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered? Built on site? In such a busy area, how could something like this just appear? A mystery. It was as if it was conjured by magic. But this is no illusion. The huge box is very real, and someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her story to look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. Help me, cried someone from inside the box. It was a man, terrified, trapped, imprisoned, his voice trembling. By now, it was as if every detective in the city was there, looking the strange structure up and down, inspecting it on every side. It didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid, and much too heavy to be moved by hand. Solid, that is, except for a single small slit, just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up, and here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man, as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, Detective Hotta comforted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time from the other investigators. However, time did not bring clarity, only anxiety, as the night dragged on, no progress opening the box. And as the night grew longer, the seeping rain puddling on the ground, the man inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. But Detective Hotta was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her like it never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed Detective Hada. You're not alone. I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together, and we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking through the narrowest of passageways, Detective Hada watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of the strange, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in silence at the hopelessness of this moment. Promise, asked the man. Promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge. She felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any of the other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. And so, when the man's eyes closed and back away, it didn't scare Detective Hada, for she knew he would return. And he did pressing his lips to the narrow slit in this horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, steam flowing from his mouth as he asked, Promise? Promise that I'm not alone? Yes, she promised. I do. Pressing her palms against the cold outside of the box without truly knowing why, Detective Hada leaned forward and placed her own lips up to the opening, letting her breath creep into the strange structure, allowing her warm, warm lips to fall on this man's. It was a gentle kiss. Moments of compassion. She could feel in this brief contact the beating of her heart, pulsing blood through every inch of her body, matched beat for beat in this soft touch. Thank you, said the man, no trace of fear remaining in his voice, as he backed away into the darkness, disappearing in a single moment of eerie calmness. Get back, yelled an officer, suddenly thrusting himself between Detective Hot and the box, breaking a silence that would soon be filled with cacophony of whirring gears and clicking latches. A symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once. Something had triggered, as if an unseen lever pulled, and the side of the giant box began to slide open. Detective Hada gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the fog and foggy interior of the giant box. Her feet splashed in the puddled rainwater, her heart racing as she swept her light from side to side. And that's when her eyes landed on the man, or at least, landed on what should have been him. There, in the corner of the box, was a pile of pieces, like parts of doll almost pulled apart, or perhaps that's just how Detective Hada had to think of him in that moment to survive. A collection of segments, limbs, pieces, disconnected from one another, cleanly severed and placed in a neat little pile, and atop that pile, a head, cold, pale, eyes open, lips in icy blue. Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, her lips blue. Tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire, or up at the sky, anywhere but at spirit. It was you who chose her, you who initiated this harrowing tale. So sad, so creepy, so sensual. She really went in great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail, and now no one is sure how to act. Dwight and Claudette 
are staring daggers at you. You have to do something. This game was supposed to be a lighthearted romp. Please, I said do something. Stand up and try to start one of those slow claps. Cool story. Say nothing. Hug her. I don't know if she'll like being touched, but we'll hug her. You stand without saying anything. Approach the spirit, reaching your arms around her for a hug. Her robe, hovering in the air, begins to wrap itself around you and squeeze you into her. It's kind of like being hugged back, but also like being tied up. It's clearly not what you expected. Instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward moment and you nearly fall over in the fire. Spirit says nothing. It floats away without so much as a goodbye. You, meanwhile, realize everyone just watched this truly strange interaction from the corner of their eyes. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I'm the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Spirit approaches you. You know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on, it was having an effect on you. This fog that follows me around, I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. You and I are both absolutely flabbergasted at that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day, even when you're a god. I mean, a narrator. You're doing it again right now. You need to calm down. You should come in the hot tub with me. Dipping in hot tubs with the spirit? You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her. An offer like that? Just don't forget our little talk. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if, someone jealous, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion can handle it. I just want to be totally clear. Even though that story bore some similarities to my life, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically, not metaphorically, or any other equally. I believe you completely. Sure, you were cut into pieces in your life, and so is the person in the story. A perfectly normal coincidence. Sure, you're on this island, trapped, one might say, in an almost puzzling place. Also completely regular co coincidence. And sure, his lips are blue, and your lips are blue. Really? You'd call this blue? Searching for answers, hoping to find revenge. Okay, so the similarities stop there, I guess. Coincidences. Sorry, the coincidences. Get this through your head. Whoever you are, samurai, samurai blood runs through my veins. Or well, maybe it's coagulated by now. No need to sweat the details. Regardless, I'm a descent of noble warriors. Thousands of years of training with bladed weapons preceded my entrance to this world. Do you know how many swords that is? A lot. You've got to figure out with that many sharp edges, a person is bound to get disconnected from the farting part here and there. The truth is, I wouldn't typically share this, so don't go blabbing about it. I dreamt that story, like watching a movie in my sleep when I was just a little girl, years before my son father sunk his blade into my skin. I've never been able to shake it. It's a very adult story for a child to dream. Do you believe me? Of course I do. I know we just met, but yes, I do believe you. The way you told that story, it clearly came from someplace deep. Fool! Who taught you to trust a stranger? You're gonna get hurt if you don't learn to take better care of yourself. Now you've got me wondering, do I believe you if you believe her or not? And if I know everything, because trust me, I do know everything, don't I already know the answer to my own question about if I believe your answer to Spirit's question? Whoa. Ocean Air got me tripping. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract us both. What's important is the certain corpsey cutie floating in a cloud of magical mist might still be waiting for you to say the right thing and free her from her puzzle box. If you believe that she is the... Damn it, got me going again. Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum to what will surely be a mind-numbing cycle of new questions, you find a certain two someone standing before you with a fresh towel, ready to dry you off. Sorry kids, 
but it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do, however, love being wrapped up in a fresh, clean towel. My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young. She'd come out all the tangles and tie a ribbon around it before sending me on my way. I miss her. You watch a spirit stares off into the distance, her hand gripping into a tight fist. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. When she catches you looking, she turns away, roughly grabs a towel from Dwight, and then pushes him and Claudette aside as she floats off. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling numbers, you think about Spirit's story and about the prisoner in the puzzle box. If you manage to escape this place, will you leave with your life? Or has it already been taken from you, and it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery? Before you can dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive, their now familiar, creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see them smile like that by lit firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We aren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable, or die trying. They hand over pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music will put you at ease? Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you want to rob with a beauty sleep. I guess I'm ready. Away we go. As you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial to fix it. Oh? What do I want to listen to? We'll go here. Let's see what's on this station. Oh, listen more? I think I have to actually land on a station, right? Let's keep going. I know this music. Let's see what else I can get. Listen more. Spooky. How you vibe with this? Let's go ninety eight. Good old classic theme. I like this. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Who would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? Miss Rin, of course. Spirit, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. I like to listen to flute music, dab on some essential oils, and steam my pores. Really? What? Even the dead like to be relaxed. I don't really have any of those things around. Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb carved from bamboo. I guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I will want it back, though. And if you lose it, well... You'll get your revenge on me if it's the last thing I do. You finally start to feel sleepy. Except, maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. I shouldn't still be as spooky, but now you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. But this one is still undeniably odd. The human body is made up of 60% of water. Did you know that? Of course you did. Everyone knows that. Even amnesiac video game protagonists. Well, guess what? Drink as much as you'd like. You'll never get to 100%. You hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Wraith stares at you awkwardly. He says nothing, just stares. You look around to see if there's something going on behind you or on either side, but nope. Just staring. Oh, you're awake. 
I saw you with the spirit right before bedtime. Are you making some sort of a alliance? Are you with... Ray scans the horizon. Them? Just making sure you, you are who you say you are. I've been burned before, and something seems off on this island since you've arrived. Even more off than usual. Um, maybe we could talk more about that tomorrow? It's just, since you got here, I, I just... I think we could have a really nice day tomorrow. Together. It's just, you have no idea how long I've been here with these monsters. To be honest, I have no idea either. They're just awful. Boring, loud, and stupid. You're different. There's finally someone here on my level. You're thoughtful, interesting, gentle. I think you could, uh, you know, have fun. I could show you some cool stuff, if you want. If you don't, that's totally cool. I get it. No pressure. In fact, probably just forget I was here. Good night. Finally, alone. For real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. And off to sleep we go. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't... Oh jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms where all the contestants talk directly into the camera. I think today went really well. These were some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that didn't end in bloodshed or untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. So I'm counting today as a win no matter what happens. What do I think of the newcomer? Um, do I have to say? Oh, I do? Okay. Hmm. Attractive? Mysterious? I really don't know that many other words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was skewered by an elk and I had to wash her entrails off my sarafan. That being said, the other three should make sure to be on their guard. I don't know who this newcomer will want to spend time with tomorrow, but I for one will not let my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Wraith, I think, knows more than he's letting on about this place. He's a hard nut to crack. Meanwhile, Spirit is just screaming all the time. Major buzzkill. And Trapper. Oof. Where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure. But daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I had a fine diet of raw deer, bear, and human, and I'm as fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. If I'm being honest, I, will, I want to kill just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them. Even the few people I can tolerate, I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person, for some reason, I would like them to continue living, for now. When a false step and, <laughs> well, you know. Everyone calls me Chopper for a reason, and they better call me Chopper. I swear, if I watch this later and you list me as Evan, I'm gonna kill that Chiron guy. I'm not really sure how to feel about Edme. On one hand, everything I've ever cared about has meant an awful fate, so it's probably good for Edme if they just keep ignoring me. On the other hand, there's something about them that could maybe work out for my plan, or er, um, for me. I know that everyone thinks of me as beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Circulation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe, okay, those are our choice, sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, if I'm gonna get bloody revenge on a society that has used me and thrown me away, maybe it wouldn't hurt to have a little help. Alright. I think it's now morning. And I will call this episode here. So, thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.